What's up, everybody? Once again, my name is Matt, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. In the last episode, we finished up the Fire Sanctuary and got ourselves the third and final Sacred Flame, which tempered our sword into the Master Sword. Now that all that is out of the way, before we return to the sky, there is one last thing that I would like to take care of. So, if you guys remember back before we went inside that temple, we found this hole that we couldn't burrow inside. Now that we do have the magma mitts, though, we can head underground and uh, find something very important on the other side. So yeah, this tunnel is pretty easy to get through. You just go in one side and uh, go out the other side. Waiting for you is a piece of heart. So there we go, guys. Three more of these and we'll complete the final heart container. Kind of weird because... You sort of expect, like, the last heart to come from a temple or something like that. But, uh, nope, this one just comes by picking up four pieces of heart. And, in fact, we'll be halfway done with this heart container by the time we finish up this episode. Because another heart piece comes from one of the goddess chests that I want to pick up. So, what do you say we return to the sky, go grab those goddess chests, and then... We'll make our way towards the Faron province because obviously in the last episode, Phi told us that we should return to the Seal Temple. That way, you know, we could awaken the Gate of Time, which is something we need to do. But here's the thing. Although we are almost done with Skyward Sword, the stuff that's left for us to do is what I would consider padding. Sure, there are some plot elements here and there that help the overall story, but at the same time... I feel like you could honestly remove those elements entirely and still have a cohesive storyline. Like, don't get me wrong, sure they add to it, but it's at the cost of repetition. Because, um, we have to go back to like all three provinces, do some stuff there, then we need to take on an entirely new Silent Realm, then there is this, um, mashup temple thing that combines like everything we've seen thus far into one, and that's on top of all the side quests that we still have to take care of before we can go to the final boss. So, honestly, I think Skyward Sword could have cut out the revisiting of the provinces. And the game would still be fine and perhaps even a little bit better as a result. Because, for me personally at least, this last section seems to combine a lot of like the things I dislike about Skyward Sword all into one massive chunk, like all at once. So... I don't know, it is kind of bothersome to play through. Maybe that's just me. Anyways, though, the first goddess chest that I would like to pick up is uh, right over here on top of the Isle of Song. So, both the chests that we're going to be collecting are inside the Thunderhead. So, let's just dive down and see if we can't grab this first chest. So, let's see what's inside this bad boy. It's... A small bomb bag. So with this, if we put it inside our adventure pouch, we can carry like five extra bombs. Not exactly the most useful thing in the world, but we'll send it over to the item check. Also, I just realized I did not take the time to place like beacons on my map. That way, you guys know where we're going. So let me do that very quickly, at least for this, you know, last goddess chest, because we already got the one on top of the Isle of Songs. But the Isle of Songs is a pretty... A uh, noteworthy place anyway, so just by saying the name you guys should know exactly where to fly this island However, I uh, haven't actually been to before although it does play a pretty important role in the game a little bit later on So we will be coming back here for now We're sort of just going to do like a flyby real quick land right here on the top and uh, the goddess cube that we want to collect I believe is right off of this ledge so let's drop down very carefully and there it is this one's the important one because inside this goddess chest well we have the second piece of heart that I was talking about so yeah only two more to go guys anyways now that we got those two goddess chests we are pretty much done here so Let's get the heck out of Dodge and return back to the normal sky and start making our way towards the Faron province. Because, like Fi said, now that our sword has been tempered with all three of the Sacred Flames, we have the ability to activate the Gate of Time inside the Sealed Temple. But, um, I was thinking about it, actually. Is activating the Gate of Time really a good idea? 
because at this point in the game, like, Girahim cannot get to Zelda no matter what, because even if he finds the Gate of Time, it's not activated, so essentially by doing nothing, we have thwarted Girahim's plan entirely, but by activating the Gate of Time, uh, Girahim sort of gets the ability to capture Zelda, you know, if he finds the Gate of Time, but we also gain the ability to save Zelda and protect her by going back in time, and then thwarting the evil at its source. But I mean, at the same time, if we don't activate the Gate of Time, we could just stay here and uh, keep fighting the Imprisoned back outside the Sealed Temple and like resealing it every so often, which does essentially stop the evil as well, only for a limited amount of time. So it, it's kind of weird if you really think about it. Like, what is the right thing to do? And I think the game is just sort of making it so there's really no right choice like no matter what you do there's going to be some consequence and link just wants to save zelda so to him going back in time is worth the extra risk of maybe gear him capturing zelda so that's exactly what we're gonna do anyways now that we're back here in the Faron province, uh, we want to make our way towards the sealed temple, so I guess we'll just land here at the sealed ground. And actually, if we land here, we're gonna notice something a little bit different that wasn't here the last time we visited this area, so... Check it out, you can already see what it is. It's this giant, like, rail track that goes all the way around the perimeter of the pit, so it's really weird, like... Who knows what exactly this thing is for, and I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. But, um, yeah, right down here we can actually see sort of a catapult cart sitting on top of these rails. So, I guess it's some sort of weapon or something? Who knows? Anyways, we'll worry about that a little bit later. For now, let's make our way inside the Seal Temple and talk to Granny and Groose and see what's going on with them. Like, it's been a long time since we've talked to them. So I'm sure they both have a lot to say, especially Granny now that we've upgraded our sword. <gasps> ah, your sword! There can be no doubt, the sacred flames have purified this blade. Well done, Link. That sword holds tremendous power. Mm. That power is a sacred force. It is a divine power left to us by the gods of old. The same power that is spoken of in the Ballad of the Goddess. To look upon you is to see that same great power, now flowing through you in the sword you carry. Come, Link. You must now open the Gate of Time. Now that the sacred force dwells within your blade, strike the Gate of Time with a skyward strike and it will surely awaken. Climb upon the pedestal and show the Gate your sword's power. Alright guys, let's charge up a Skyward Strike. Whoa! -ho! No, I fear the seal has given way once again. That terrible beast is awakening even as we speak. It is likely that the monster reacted to the sacred power given off by your sword. I wish it had not happened, but there was no other way to open the gate. So it goes. Link, you must imprison the beast once again. <laughs> Alright, bring it on! This is what I've been waiting for. It's time to break out my new toy. Trust me, that flabby bag of teeth doesn't stand a chance. Well, what are you waiting for? I'm heading out there. Well, 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 apparently that thing we saw outside is actually Groose's invention. And I am sure he's gonna tell us all about it. So, let's head outside and uh, see if we can't put a stop to the imprison before it's too late. No. Hey, Link! Yeah. <laughs> Try not to drool on your shirt as you stare at this amazing super weapon I've been working on. I call it... The Grucinator. Leaves is speechless, doesn't it? That's only natural. You wouldn't believe how much time I put into building this beauty. Here, check it out. 
First, I got all the fences cluttering the area out of the way. Then I laid down rails for her to run on, all by myself, of course. I don't know what came over me. I had no clue that I had the talent to make something like this, you know? Anyhow, just tell me where you want me to place my shots and I'll put a hurt on that ugly monster. I don't care how beefy you are. You're bound to stumble for a few moments after taking one of my big bombs to the body. Hang on though, that monster showed up a smidge sooner than I was expecting. There are a few final adjustments I gotta make before she can move on the rails I've put down. I'll call out to you when she's ready for action. Till then, do whatever you can to hold off that beast. Aww, isn't it great to see Groose and Link working together? It's so nice. Anyways though, not a whole lot of time to appreciate their friendship. Instead, let's head right down into the center of the pit and get this thing started. And here we go. It's our first rematch with the Imprisoned. And this time, he has arms. Look at that. Seems like our ugly friend grew itself a pair of hands. Great timing. I hope it knows how to catch because my machine has a mean right arm. When she's all loaded up, I'll let you know. Until then, do what you need to do to stop it. All right, well, let's get started. So you'll notice right off the bat, the Imprisoned is a lot faster this time around. And honestly, I recommend just going in and don't worry about all the damage that you're probably gonna end up taking from uh, him stomping around. Be quick, that is your main priority because the fact that he is faster means that um he will get up to where the Seal Temple is very, very quickly if you're not careful. Plus. He can also climb on the walls and pull himself up, so yeah, he's a lot harder this time around. Hey Link, the machine's all loaded and ready to smash. If that flabby sack of teeth tries to climb the wall, I can blast it off from here with a bomb. When you want some backup from me, just send me the signal with the D-pad. Alright, well now seems like a good time, Groose. Alright, it's time for Groose to explode into action. Adjust the machine's position with a control stick and aim at your target with the Wii Remote. Once you finish aiming, press A to launch a bomb. If it hits, you'll stun that scaly sucker. If you forget the controls, press 2 any time. You're in control of the Grusinator to review the basics. Alright, sounds good, buddy. So, let's just launch a bomb right at that dude's face. And, um, that will stun it in place for a few moments as well as knock it off the wall. Ha! Huh, she packs a mean punch, doesn't she? I tell ya, I was in love the first time I pulled this lever. I'll start loading her back up with another bomb, so keep beating on that big ugly till I give you the signal. Right, so you can't just like keep firing the Grusinator over and over, like you need to wait until he reloads another bomb into the catapult itself, and that is kinda like a big thing, and you will want to make use of the Grusinator like every chance you get, because like I keep saying, this guy is a lot faster this time around, and it can be a hassle to keep up with the movements of his feet, especially if he knocks you back, like, while he's sort of, um, running. Also, because of his hands, yeah, sometimes you will need to go down and around just to reach his weak point. But, uh, since we're pretty much at the bottom of the pit, we have enough room to sneak around him. Alright, so, that's our first hit on the Imprisoned. Two more to go. Now, there is sort of an advanced technique you can use to defeating this guy. If you actually get above him, you can stun him with the Grusinator and then land on his head. But, um, since we're already back in business with the Grusinator, might as well stun him again. Normally, I don't use that advanced technique until I absolutely have to. It is a lot cooler and, um, it does save you from, uh, having to defeat, like, all the weird toes on his feet. But at the same time, if you mess it up, you do waste a lot of time, and time is really of the essence, so I try not to do that unless I absolutely have to. Now, honestly, your main strategy for this should be focusing on one foot at a time, because once you take out all the toes on one foot, 
he cannot walk as fast as he previously could. So that does allow you to sort of get in front of him. But at the same time, you need to watch out because those electric waves come out so quickly that they will just continually knocking you back. And it can be kind of problematic. So here's the thing. Like, you could pretty much just wait for the Grusinator to uh, reload and then only attack him when the Grusinator has reloaded, but I find that it's much faster just to, you know, tank some of the extra damage and go for the toes. Like, obviously, I know I've already taken a lot more damage than probably I've needed to in this fight, but, um, to be completely honest, I don't really worry about how much damage I'm taking during the imprisoned fights because I know really since he can't damage me, like, by himself, I can control how much damage I take, so, um, I don't mind, like, getting squished by his feet a little bit during the beginning, just because I know, like, overall it's helping me defeat the boss a little bit faster, and all the damage that I'm taking is pretty much controlled, so I really don't need to worry about, uh, dying or anything stupid like that. Anyways, yeah, make sure you hit him with a bomb as quickly as you can when he's slithering up the hill. That way, you sort of stop him in place because he will just, like, continue to slither up and, uh, make a lot of headway towards the temple if you don't hit him. Sadly, though, that bomb doesn't count as, like, stunning him in place. It just sort of takes him out of that, um, slither form. So, if we want to stun him, we need to wait for Groose to reload the Grusinator. But in the meantime... We still have some time to deal some damage to a couple of his toes at least, but uh, yeah, as you can see, he's like super fast uh, when both of his feet are undamaged, so it does make it kind of hard to get in there and deal some damage. Thankfully, the Grusinder is back up and please hit. Oh my gosh, thank goodness that hit his arm, otherwise that really would have been bad. He's a little over halfway towards the temple, but taking out that foot should slow him down quite a bit. And now we just gotta take out this one. I might actually wait for the Grusinator. Not sure how quickly I can get ahead of this guy, at least far enough to deal a couple of good attacks to him. That is the problem because he's moving so quickly, so you run out of stamina very quickly trying to just keep up with this guy. Come on. Oh my gosh, there's only one stinking toe left. I just want to get it please man just give it to me oh oh my gosh that was awful um good news that the grusander is back up but i really did not want to fall there all right you know what? let me just use the grusander and i'll send him in place then get the final hit no 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 okay i really need to do this quickly and launch the bomb please hit and all right good it did stun him in place actually no that damage is toe enough to knock him over holy crap that is awesome Alright, so now, um, I just need to make it to the front of his head. Hopefully I can do this quickly before he gets back up. Like, I know they give you a lot of time to do this, but I am kind of far away and, uh, almost out of stamina. So, come on, please do not mess this up. Like, he's really close to the temple. And we are done with the Imprisoned Revisited. So long, buddy. Thank goodness that is over. Like, I really don't like the imprisoned fights, but, um, they are pretty stressful and pretty intense. Like, I'll give them that. Now, Link, strike the ceiling spike with a skyward strike and restore the seal quickly. All right, you got it, Granny. Let's go seal this beast away, if even for a short time, because we have way more important things to do than deal with this guy again. So get back into your prison, the imprisoned. I'd rather not deal with you for quite a bit, so let's just uh, draw this symbol of mine. There we go. I was like doing it four times, but uh, my remote did not want to work there. Anyways, that ought to do it. Hey! 
Nice work there, Link. Of course, you couldn't have done it without me, but no need to thank Bruce. I know I saved your tail. Now, let's get that gate of time thing up and running. I'll go on ahead. Alright, sounds like a good idea. So, let's make our way back up to the sealed temple and see if we can activate the good old gate of time. That way, we can finally... Put a stop to this madness once and for all, because I don't know about you guys, but, um, I was totally done fighting the imprisoned, you know, back when we fought him the first time, so, yeah, I am pretty eager to stop him from appearing. Also, I just realized I took a ton of damage during that fight, holy crap, but, um, like I said, it really doesn't matter since you do technically control how much damage you take as long as you're careful enough so even though I did like lose 10 hearts I'm not really too concerned about it plus there are very easy ways that we can restore hearts inside the sealed temple by just like sitting down on one of the stools that's inside so let's head inside and uh, talk to Gruce and Granny one more time it seems you were successful in imprisoning the monster again You have my thanks, Link. As do you, Groose. I do not wish to dwell on what may have happened if you two hadn't been here. <laughs> oh, you give me too much credit, Granny. You were the one who got me to stop feeling sorry for myself and put my energy into doing what I could to help. I did what was necessary to get you to realize your full potential. Link, you must wonder just what it is you've been fighting out there in the Great Pit. And there is much I could tell you, but suffice to say, it is the root of the evil we face. When you pass through the Gate of Time, you shall learn more. We may seal it and reseal it into its prison a thousand times, but it will always shatter the bonds that confine it. Such is its awesome power. We must destroy it at its source, or suffer this fate again and again. There is no time to lose. Hit the gate with a skyward strike. Come on already, charge that sword of yours with the sacred force stuff Granny was talking about and zap the gate of time! Right on, Granny. Indeed. Now, Link, go. Go to the gate. Alright, so, we can now finally activate the Gate of Time, but we're going to do that in the next episode. So if you guys enjoyed this part of like rating, would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. But once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.